Hello everybody, welcome back. This will be my July Rewind for all the things that made an impression in July. Can you believe we're already in August, the eighth month, five months left to the year? Like we were just in January and January was the never ending month. Like January just rolled on and on and on. Everyone well, let's say a lot of people, because I want y'all to say, I didn't feel that way. But a lot of people just felt January just was never ending. It was slow. They said it's because we had like five Mondays in that month. But it was never ending. And since February hit, we have zoomed through the calendar year. This month I have movies, TV some makeup, books, music, and random. I watched quite a few movies this month. We had the HBO free weekend, so I watched some movies there and I watched some documentaries. But let's see, I watched Shape of Water. I got that one from Netflix. I actually really enjoyed that. And that was the first Michael Shannon movie of that weekend. Then I ended up watching Fahrenheit 451 from HBO. It had Michael B. Jordan. And Fahrenheit 451, the movie, it was based on the government suppressing our ability to have knowledge, especially in the form of books. Like, the government wanted to control everything we knew, everything we thought. And 451, there were... There was a fraction of a, the resistance that was keeping books and they were having people memorize the books. I thought that was really interesting and, you know, it very much felt in line with our current state of affairs. And I just really enjoyed the concept of the movie. But I just skipped right over Shape of Water, but I really did enjoy Shape of Water. I thought it was very interesting and like the point that people really felt about the uh what was her name I don't remember the lady's name but you know her and the amphibian being together like it wasn't even like that serious it just it was just a really nice movie I enjoyed that one from Guillermo del Toro <laughs> Well, look at that accent. And then I watched Paterno. That was Al Pacino. Al Pacino? Robert De Niro? I want to say Al Pacino because he's been really involved in these um, documentary style things because he did the Jack Kevorkian one, which I really enjoyed that one because Jack Kevorkian was a Michigan doctor and then we went fast paterno and I remember that story when it happened when I was a kid about him ex helping with assisted suicides and the paternal one that was really good like it was really interesting to see what information came out and how the school really didn't push to find out more information to actually make a commitment to protecting students or really was to protect the children that Sandusky hurt, you know, I mean, mentally, physically, he harmed these children and the school tried to cover it up and that's never okay. And we're still dealing with those ramifications, especially when it comes to sports. Like, if it touches the school sports where they get their money, they're going to hush-hush things. And we're seeing that all over the place. You see it, you saw it at MSU with Nasser, And you're seeing, you're hearing a little bit more of it come out more. Especially with these older um, programs, established programs. I watched the... Lego Ninjago movie and I did want to see that when I saw the preview for it. I think when I saw Black Panther. I think I saw it was Black Panther. 
I don't know what I thought. And his dad called him Lloyd. I know your name is Lloyd because that's what I named you. No, my name's Lloyd. Lloyd. Like he just couldn't understand that. One of the L's was silent. Then I watched three and a half minutes, 10 bullets. It was about Jordan Davis who was murdered in 2012 by a Mr. Dunn in a gas station parking lot over loud music, loud rap music. And Jordan Davis was a 17 year old black teen who was killed by an older white man because he felt he was being threatened and Florida has that stand your ground. Michigan has it as well. But that was a really interesting one. And Jordan Davis's mother, I'll put her name across the bottom. She is running for some seat in office in Florida. And she's very much into, you know, gun control laws. So the um, Stoneman Douglas children are, you know, they're involved in that too. So I will definitely write her name below because uh, her last name is not Davis. I watched Finding Dory. Oh my goodness, Finding Dory was adorable. I loved Dory's, finding out Dory's backstory and that Marlon and Nemo were still along for the ride with Dory. Then I watched 3,000 Miles to Graceland. I have no idea what I thought 3,000 Miles to Graceland was because it wasn't what I thought it was. I kind of thought it would be like a group of Elvis impersonators going cross country from California to Tennessee to go to Graceland. And I just thought it was gonna be a fun, campy, comedy, like Tu Wong Fu, Love Julie Newmar with you know, where they were, um, it was Patrick Swayze, John Leguizamo, and Wesley Snipes. And if you know the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But I thought that 3,000 Miles to Graceland would be like that. 3,000 Miles to Graceland was not like that. It has Kevin Costner, Kurt Russell. It had Courtney Cox, David Arquette. You know, they just had tons of people in there. I only loved the first like 15 minutes of the movie and after that I was done. I really only liked the casino scene, so that was not great. Let's see. We'll do TV. I told you about the HBO free weekend. That was what the 6th through the 9th or something like that. I watched all of Westworld. The last time I had a free weekend or it was watch-a-thon and Westland had come back and I got to see the first episode and I got to see the whole season now and like my thoughts are always oh Bernard <laughs> like Bernard is the key for everything really and I I'm intrigued with the season finale but I don't know that I'm going to love season three. Let's see. The episode Kasayu, it was the one where we got to learn about the indigenous um, world that they have there because they're like subsections of Westworld. And it was so beautiful so well done and then they went into Japanese culture I was it was so nice to see all these different factions within Westworld because you would think it was just the wild wild west and it was so much more and it was so beautifully done it was I was blown away by the whole entire second season the cinematography the stories and 
I wish I could remember that guy's name. Like, all I see is, like, Mathis from Longmire, if you ever watch that. But it was so good. So good. Oh. Let's see. I've definitely been into animation. Craig of the Creek on Cartoon Network. That is a new series this year. It's about a 10-year-old little black boy. And his adventures with his two best friends. You get to see his family. And his dad is voiced by Terry Crews. I just really love the show and Craig is adorable and I've been watching Bonicula and Be Cool Scooby Doo. Those are available from Boomerang. I've been watching them from another site but I've really been enjoying them. Let's see I watched Barry. The season finale of Barry. O-M-G. I don't know how we go from that season finale. But I am very much intrigued. And I've been watching PBS Kids. I've been into Nature Cat and Ready Jet Go. Ready Jet Go is my jam. And then Trial and Error came back. And I love Trial and Error. It's still so good. And it's still so funny. And well written and it's just a zany zany comedy based in a small town of Peck like this season we're getting more little pieces of Peck and it's just hilarious let's do the random things that have happened in my life I've been clenching my teeth lately and at the beginning of the month clenched my teeth like three nights in a row I was in so much pain and it was only on the right side of my face like the gums hurt I think I cracked a filling I <sighs> I have caused myself pain and I got myself a night guard so it slowed up and I've been working on unclenching and face exercises for my jaw to help but I had pain I was putting a heating pad there because the heat would help like cold was not helpful and it was the kind of pain well it was a because it didn't get to the point of like it hurt when I had to get my wisdom teeth removed this side started first and then six months later I had to do this side Ugh, but they're gone but my mouth is feeling better now I've been using a sensitivity toothpaste and that's been helping. I've been kind of on a, I was kind of on a digital detox. Like I wasn't doing emails. Like I would film my videos and put them up and I was scheduling them to go up because I wasn't really on the internet. My emails were stacking up. I would try to go on Instagram just to like some pictures, you know, but I was very much away from a lot of social media which I enjoyed because social media sometimes is overwhelming on a good day then I fell into a I was on the fantastic ladies website on Facebook and they show you like marketplace and they had a home there and then somehow I ended up on Zillow have you ever been on Zillow like that is a rabbit hole I really enjoyed it because they take tons of pictures of homes and you get to see homes in your neighborhood or other places that are for sale or rent whatever and it's just such a rabbit hole to go down you get to see how people decorate see the space see how homes were constructed at certain times like some of these homes had like super narrow staircases some people had like funky eclectic furniture and so I kept falling down a Zillow hole okay YouTube comments is anyone else getting any of their subscribers like actual subscribers people that subscribe to me I subscribe to them but their comments comments go into my spam you know so I don't always see them I go based on if I get the notification to go you know go back and comment and so it'll be several days later and I 
feel bad. Like they were like, oh, she didn't even care that I commented. And it's not that, it's that they go into the spam and I don't know they're there. So I have to be mindful to check the spam, you know, a day at, you know, a couple hours after I upload a video just to see if, you know, a comment has gone into the spam. I don't really know why that keeps happening. And it's to a specific few people, which is ridiculous. And I'm so behind on YouTube videos because of that digital detox. I'm trying to work on each person and watching all their videos, trying to work like that. But y'all put up a lot of videos <laughs> in the month of July. Books. I did a summer reading challenge at the library, so I was reading books. I read The Blood Detective by Dan Waddell. It was a very clinical dry book, and from what I read on Goodreads, apparently, there's nothing too uh, intriguing about genealogy. You know, it's not a sexy way to go in a crime mystery. But I am intrigued by the second book, which I assume is out because this first book was written in like 2007, 2009. I got it at a library book sale. I read The Outsider from Stephen King. This was a really good book. I It did take a long time because that's how Stephen King works. He's a very, he will tell you everything, every piece you need to know. It was very reminiscent to me of Lissy's story, and that was the first Stephen King novel I've ever read. But that one freaked me out. It took me a month before Mirror stopped freaking me out because of Lissy's story. But with this one, The Outsider, um, it was kind of, it was like a supernatural episode to me. Like, they don't really stick with me, and that they would be psychologically playing tricks with my mind and then I read a book on procrastination it eh, procrastination is still the name of the game in my life then I listened to an audiobook that Vincent Price narrated I love Vincent Price I love his voice and they were graveyard stories they were really interesting and then I fell down in Edgar Allan Poe hole I read The Fall of the House of Usher, The Mask of the Red Death, The Black Cat, and then The Telltale Heart, and then there was The Raven, and maybe one more, but I really enjoyed all that I read this month. Music-wise, I listened to Christina Aguilera's Liberation CD. I like Unless It's With You and Fall In Line. Those were the two songs I really enjoyed. Then I listened to The Carters. Beyonce and Jay-Z, they came out with the album Everything is Love, and I really like the song Summer. The whole album is good, but like Summer was the one I really enjoyed. I just really enjoy albums that are cohesive, and The Carters was definitely a cohesive album. It read very well, listened to very well, I guess. Audio wise it was a very good listen it you didn't go from like one tempo to another or like the last cd i listened to from john legend when he had there was only the one song i liked that was that fast one but he had like a slow song and then he put the fast one and then the rest of the album was slow like you either start with the fast one and go to the slows or you stay with the slows and then the the fast one would have been at the end like the fast tempo because that one kind of threw me that then I was able to have a week of Pandora premium for free through Walmart it was a seven day trial I enjoyed the heck out of that trial I just have the free one it does me well and now makeup I used two palettes this month and I am keeping them both I enjoyed them both this one is from Ulta. I got this one in 2016. It was a gift with purchase one. This is it. It is nine shadows, a cheek, and a highlight. I actually used this as the bronzer when I was using this for two weeks. 
well a couple times at least but it's just a very light color it just gave a little warmth but you get six mattes and three shimmers I guess you get four shimmers and five mattes that's my bad this light one up here is a shimmer and these three down here are I really enjoyed the purple and the blue this pink one is very light I used it in a corner but these uh, mattes bruh these mattes are pigmented they're like the subculture where you use a little bit at a time because they won't blend out if you put too much at one time like see what I'm saying but they were so pigmented like I'm impressed as I'll get out with how pigmented this is and this is from NYX this is their earth palette they came out with all the elements you had earth wind fire water air I liked earth and fire I got to see them in person at Ulta and I chose earth it has a really nice mirror there we go but these are the shades there we go these are really nice shades I love that green like so pretty that's such a pretty green I use the yellow no that's a gold the yellow that's the gold this peach and this red were two of my favorites they're so soft like that's the peach that's the red and those are more of the mattes like they're so nice they glide on really well glide on <laughs> they apply well they blend out they look really nice like I was using the peach like up here underneath the brow bone just to give it a little more definition like I'm just super impressed and I did not pay the $30 for this I got this no no I got this on a nice price and you got to use your coupon at the same time yes I did not pay $30 for this, no. Like, this would be a nice $16 palette. But I do enjoy that. So those were the two palettes I used this month. Like, ugh, I'm so impressed. I forgot to add this into the video originally. But I want to announce the winner of my third anniversary giveaway here on YouTube. And the winner is May Win. Congratulations, May. All right, you guys. So that was my July Rewind. I hope you enjoyed. Did you do anything fun or something that stuck with you in July? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed please do i would love to have you and if you've already subscribed thank you very much i want you guys to be safe be well peace <laughs>